But notice also there has to be some preparation to return. Jacob said to his family, he, he said, I want you to get rid of all the, uh, the, fo- the foreign gods that are in your midst, and I want you to purify yourselves and change your clothes. Now you've got to remember, they had not been given the Ten Commandments yet, where it says, I shall have no other gods before me, and I shall not make any graven images. This is back in the progressive revelation of, of the book of Genesis. But they understood who God was, and Jacob understood that there shouldn't be any foreign gods in our midst if we're going to go worship this God that he had encountered, El Shaddai, uh, back yonder 30 years before. And these foreign gods had crept into their lives, probably when they raided the Shechemites, they probably stole their foreign gods and brought them into their house. The earrings that they took off were not just earrings like ladies wear today as decorative uh, jewelry. It, was, uh, it, it had graven images of these foreign gods on them. And so he said, I want you to get rid of these foreign gods that are in your midst. It, it is, uh, and, and so it, even his own wife, one of his own wives, Rachel, had taken her father's uh, idol, back household idol, back many, uh, many years ago. And so she probably still had it. And then he said, purify yourselves and change clothes. That's, a, that's an imagery of when we're dirty physically, what do we need to do? We need to bathe and put on clean clothes. And so it was that he was, uh, he, he was saying to them, uh, you, you, need to, you need to get rid of the sin in your life and we're going to be in the presence of the Lord and we're going to go to Him. So you've got to get rid of idols and you've got to get your heart prepared to be able to, to go in the presence of God. It always has to be that way. I, I mean, God, we don't, earn, we don't earn the right to come into God's presence, but we do have to make sure that we prepare ourselves to experience God, and we have to prepare ourselves to prepare God by, by repentance in our life. Now, we get appalled sometimes when we hear Pastor Finney Matthews or one of us who've had the privilege going to India talk about the millions of gods and goddesses that are in India, and, we, and all these elaborate temples and where they worship all these idols, and we think, how can people in our culture of our day and education and all that worship something like that? But then we need to look in our own life. American idols, we have plenty of them. You say, preacher, what are they? Well, what consumes your thoughts? What consumes your time? What do you consumes your money? That determines the idols of our life. And the Apostle John, in his little epistle as he closed it out, he said, keep yourselves free from idols. It's not just something back yonder that had a problem, something that we have in our day is a problem as well. And so we got to prepare ourselves by repentance. Repentance is being sorry for our sins, being sorry enough to tell God that we're sorry, and being sorry enough to do something about it. Now, we're all sorry. <laughs> sorry for sin? Well, sometimes we're sorry we got caught in our sin. Sometimes we're just sorry because we have self-pity for ourselves because things haven't gone for us well in life. But are we sorry for sin? If we are, we're sorry enough to tell God we're sorry because it's Him that we have sinned against. And then if we're really sorry for our sin in the presence of God, then we're willing to make a change in our life and turn away from our sin and turn toward Him. And that's what Jacob was saying to his people. we got to get our hearts right before we can go in the presence of God. And what we got to do is, is get rid of this sin. we got to turn away from it. we got to, we got to move toward God in that kind of humbleness and brokenness of heart. It's what the prodigal son did. He buried his idols in the hog pen, the idols of pleasure and money and, and all the righteous living that he did and his self-centeredness, and he buried it in the hog pen of life, and he, and he went home. And he, he told God he was sorry. He told his father he was sorry, and he told his father he was sorry enough to do something about it, and that is come and live in a life of submission to him. And so repentance, it has to be there. You can't short-circuit it. If it's going to be real change in our lives, we have to come in the presence of God. But we can't get in the presence of God unless we've got the right kind of heart. And that heart has to be a a broken, contrite heart that has true, genuine repentance in it. It's the only way we can ever bring about change. And um, so there's probably some gods that need to be buried under the 
oak tree of Shechem in our lives today.